it's a plug-in time switch and the type of plug and the socket on this type of unit will vary depending on the country. They'll just basically use the same hub, but they'll use different inserts. And this one has a really interesting fault. If we zoom down it and I plug it in, it is displaying the time 3.52 a.m. That's the actual time. Uh-oh, maybe I should be in bed. But if we plug it in, and uh, I'll zoom down this. Zoom down further and focus on the display. Right, so you can see it's displaying the time. But if I turn the, at the moment the little relay is on inside, but if I turn the relay off, the display just goes basically all the segments light, if you will. Uh, and that's quite odd. So let's uh, explore this. So I shall unplug it. Incidentally, as, as soon as the relay turns on again, it's loaded down, the display comes back to the normal display of time. Okay. So the first thing that came to mind was the usual failure with these is that the uh, dropper capacitor fails. But usually when that happens, the relay doesn't click decisively. It just starts buzzing or it has problems or every time it comes in, it causes it to reset. This is not doing that. Is this going to be deep enough? It might not. Oh, it is deep enough. Excellent. At this point, I should say that... Uh, this is a mains voltage device. Take the usual precautions uh, when working with electricity, etc. Blah, 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 blah. I feel the need to put disclaimers in these days. It's just, it's the way life has gone. It's the future. Lots of weird disclaimers. Do not drink gasoline, etc. So the other thing that's come to mind before I, I look any further is that because the display changes when it's off. Maybe the Zener diode has actually failed. Maybe it's burnt up and uh, isn't Zenering anymore. So let's pull this out. Depending on the circuitry, and the other thing it could have failed is the solder in the Zener. The other thing that also came to mind is the little uh, memory backup capacitor, but that is keeping the, the memory backup. Okay, interesting. First thing I want to do here, where is the Zener diode? I can see some diodes down here, but oh, there's the Zener diode there. How is it soda connections? The soda connections look dry-ish, but okay. Um, right, tell you what, I could plug this in, and this is where the warning becomes valid, yes. Don't plug things in and poke about, etc. blah, 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 that I should say these things just to protect the innocent. So I'm going to plug it in and I'm going to measure the voltage across this Zener diode down here because it's the biggest one. I get the feeling that it's the main one that's dropping the, the power. Oh, what am I turning that to diode for? I just turned it to diode. I should turn it round to, say, 200 volts. And it will very carefully plug it in. This is where the whole circuit board and everything becomes live. I feel the need to set an example by putting on a pair of gloves. One moment, please. The gloves are on, my special gloves, with the missing bit so I can actually touch the touchscreen. Excellent. Now I've got my safety gloves on, I can uh, reduce the risk of being locked onto an electrical device when I plug this in. Excellent. It is now powered. Let's change the states of that so it's uh, doing its bizarre, super saturated display thing. And we'll get the meter in and I'll probe across that Zener diode. I... Wouldn't be surprised if it was showing a uh, higher voltage. It is showing signs of heat. 25.4 isn't too bad for a 24 volt diode. So why is it doing this then? What about the... Is the um, memory backup battery... Is it floating up to a higher voltage? Let's get this across here. It's going up to about 2 volts when it's supposed to be 1.2. Oh, it's not even in the shot. I wonder if that's a factor into this. Hmm. Uh, let me um, click this button so the relay comes on again, because the display is just saturated out at the moment. Let's measure the voltage across the... Now the relay has come in, it's actually loading it down. So let's check the voltage across that. This is where I'm going to short something out. The massive bang and a shower of sparks. Well, the voltage drops down to about 18 volts, but that's fairly normal. Okay, that's tricky. I wonder what's causing the issue here. That's not a really obvious fault. Right, um, I'll unplug this. 
And I shall, just experimentally, there's the dropper capacitor. No, that's the relay. There's a dropper capacitor. Let's measure the uh, capacitance of that. I shall bridge it out first. You can see the heat damage on the circuit board from the Zener diode because it is dissipating quite a lot of heat. I'm actually surprised it's still intact. Looking for other... The heat often causes dry joints on here. I do see some shady soda joints. I mean, we could try reflowing all the joints. But let's check that capacitor. So I'll just initially check there's no residual charge across it. Nothing there. Okay. And I'll actually get a capacitance tester in it. So the value of the capacitor is theoretically 0.33 megfarad, 330 nanofarad. So let's put it to 2 microfarad here. And we can go across there. That shall just hold the leads on. 300 nanofarad isn't bad for a 330 nanofarad capacitor, particularly one as old as this. Right, tell you what, I'm going to just experimentally reflow all the solder joints in this. One moment, please. And it's fixed. And let me show you what actually went wrong. First of all, I'll prove it's fixed. We'll zoom down onto it so you can see the display clearly. Is that in focus? Yep. And if I enable the relay, the relay is on and the display is fine. That's when the display was fine before. And now the relay is off and the display is still fine and crisp. And it was an interesting fault. Let me unplug this gingerly and I'll show you a schematic I have drawn. Uh, here's the clue. Here's the nickel metal hydride cell out of that unit. Let me get the gloves off and get the... I've get, I'm getting hints of uh, Charlie in the Chocolate Factory here with the squeaky rubber gloves. Let me bring in the schematic of the power supply and the battery backup system. Let's get even closer. Let's get as close as possible. Even a bit closer. Yeah, that'll do. And I'll make sure we're focused down onto there. So the circuitry was this. It uses a capacitive dropper and it uses an inrush limiting 150 ohm resistor, which also doubles up as a fuse. The capacitive dropper uses this X2 capacitor with a 1 meg ohm discharge resistor across it and then goes to a discrete bridge rectifier. Across the output of the bridge rectifier is a Zener diode capping the voltage to 24 volts and a electrolytic capacitor with a value of 47 megfarad, 50 volt. There's a little capacitor there. There is the Zener diode just tucked in there. I did reflow the solder. It was didn't like being reflowed, to be honest. It was very dry and crusty because the Zener diodes always run quite hot. Uh, but that at that point, we've got roughly a stable 24 volt supply. and It doesn't have to be too accurate. It can waver up and down a bit, but that is going out to the relay. And uh, under the load, when the relay turns on, it will initially have the full 24 volts. Then uh, the load of the relay coil being switched by a little MOSFET transistor, I think it's a MOSFET, will... Uh, basically pull that voltage rail down a bit but that by that time the relay has physically clicked in and it just it needs just a holding voltage and that's the point that it pulled the voltage down here that it was enough to actually correct the problem you see here's the charging circuit for the nickel metal hydride cell there's no voltage cap in it it's relying on the nickel metal hydride cell to provide the 1.2 to 1.5 volts that's required by the logic circuitry the actual time circuitry in the front this little module here and to give it its charge current, it uses a potential divider across the 24 volts. It's got a 22K resistor, which is the main current limiting resistor to the charging this nickel metal hydride cell. And then it's got this 2K7 resistor, which caps the voltage here to about 2.6 volts. And that then goes via this diode and charges the cell. So if the cell was fully discharged, it would actually pull this voltage down a little bit more. But that 2.6 volts is dropped by about 0.6 volts across this diode just to the diode is there to prevent the nickel metal hydride cell self-discharging into the circuitry when the unit is unplugged. And normally a good nickel metal hydride cell, a fresh one, will have a fairly low impedance and it will cap to 1.2 to 1.5 volts. But what was happening here is because the impedance of the cell had risen up, it's basically dried out over time with the continuous trickle charging. Um, it, uh, the impedance rose high enough that the voltage rose here 
to the 2.6 volts minus the 0.6, it rose right up to 2.2 uh, 2 volts roughly. And that 2 volts was enough just to upset the circuitry and bias. It may have been working behind the scenes, but I do recall that it had crashed. Uh, but this circuitry here is designed to work at 1.2 to 1.5 volts, 1.5 volts typically max. And uh, that 2 volts was just pushing it over the edge and causing the display and operation problems. So the answer was to get another Nikometo hydride cell out of a... I mean, it's the standard type. It was out of a solar light. What was this one marked? Where is my magnifying glass? Let's read what it says on it. 40 milliamp hour, 1.2 volt nickel metal hydride charge for milliamps for 14 hour. Well, it's continuous trickle charge at lower current. Round about one milliamp, I'd guess. But um, the answer was just to get that out of a cheap dollar store pound shop solar light. It was a Poundland solar light. And stick that in here and that's capped the voltage, since that is regulating voltage down to the 1.2 to 1.5 volt threshold. And that has solved the problem. So that's an interesting thing. I did suspect the capacitors initially, because that is the usual suspect. I then suspected that it could be the Zener diode had failed, just because they do run quite hot, because they're passing, they're basically shunting the full current to the load. Basically, the Zener diode is basically dissipating all the power of the relay when it's not on. And when the relay comes on, it kind of like shunts that load and it gives the Zener diode a break. Um, but it wasn't any of those things. It was the nickel metal hydride cell. And this is also an issue, failing batteries. I mean, if you come up to an old piece of industrial equipment that uses a nickel metal hydride cells or sealed lead acid battery, it's worth considering changing them, particularly if there are problems. But also note that some of the really old equipment will lose settings or even dump its whole program and some really badly designed systems when you take the battery out to change it. So that's worth knowing and uh, just working around. But that's it. It is fixed. As always, just if you're working on electrical stuff like this, just in case you get complacent, you put your fingers across either side of the circuit board and plug it in, then find you can't let go of the thing. That's where the gloves come in handy because just that thin layer provides that extra layer of protection. Thicker if you want, but that's a basic set of uh, PVC dip gloves like this will have a significant safety factor and just protect you from nasty instance, instances. But there we have it. It's fixed. I'm happy with the result. And it was just that cheap nickel metal hydride cell. Replacement cost a pound or a dollar for a cheap solar light. Whip the cell out, smack it in, and we're off again. The time switch is fixed.